Hey there. This is part of a video series uh, I'm, I'm doing. Basically, uh, it's it's 15 minutes to be a better field target shooter. And the idea is to give you a quick video uh, with interviewing some some expert shooters in about 15 minutes, uh, taking a, a topic and giving some tips and some suggestions to make you a better field target shooter. And today we're going to cover the offhand lane, the standing lane. And I'm going to be talking to Paul Cray. Now, Paul Cray is originally from Dublin, Ireland, but he's lived in uh, New York since the late 90s. Um, he shoots WFTF PCP, but in the past he has shot piston. Um, uh, he is uh, he started shooting field target in 2002. So he's been shooting for quite a while. Uh, he's won multiple national championships in both piston and PCP WFTF. Um, and he's been to the Worlds, I believe, four times, and he's done very well at the Worlds. Um, so we're going to talk to Paul now and see what kind of wisdom he has for us. So, hey, Paul, how are you doing today? Philip, great to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you for spending the time uh, talking to us about um, about shooting and your experience shooting offhand. And um, I get a lot of questions, people asking, uh, well, a lot of different things. But offhand is one of those, you know, it's, it's the hardest uh, part of field target that we shoot for the most part. And uh, a lot of a lot of shooters dread the shooting lane. So my first question for you is, uh, do you like shooting offhand? Do you dread it? What's your attitude when you come up to the 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 uh, offhand lane? It is the blue ribbon of all the disciplines, isn't it? Stunning. <laughs> it's a blue ribbon event. Uh, I use. It's where we all kind of look ahead up the lanes and see mm -hmm. uh oh standing is coming up and it's already it's already in your head it's already in your head mm -hmm. and it's it's a very difficult thing to uh get out of your head but the last year i put a lot of work into not letting it affect me mm -hmm. and a lot of that it's mental it's just mental yeah. And it's and one of the things is i got this from our shooting our, i don't shoot archery but i looked at archers and it's called target panic mm -hmm. so if you're trepidatious about the position you're automatically putting yourself at a disadvantage mm -hmm. where i train how i train started to retrain my brain was to get a, a, a bit full-size target at about 25 yards re really easy target and just concentrate on releasing the perfect shot don't worry about missing don't worry about anything so that kind of that takes a few months of just retraining your brain mm -hmm. to accept that. Look, at the target is the maximum it can only be be it's forty five yards. Mm -hmm. it's, you know that's it. It's not going to be a mile away. You know, and, and and most matches, the furthest they are in even in the worlds, they're only thirty five yards. Mm -hmm. It's very rarely you get a target out past forty. Standing, mm -hmm. standing target out, right. out past forty. Mm -hmm. So I would, I, I would tell people to to train their brain to accept that it's a standing shot, and when you're training, don't release a shot until what you see in the scope is uh, what you want to see in the scope. You don't want to be buzzing all around the kill zone. Mm -hmm. Keep it in the middle. There's always going to be movement. You have to accept that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's two ways. If you're sometimes your hold is good and then the next day you're like it's all over the place mm -hmm. so there's two there's two ways I, I i approach it the shot uh two different ways if i am steady i can have a really nice trigger pull and follow through mm -hmm. if i'm not that steady then you have to punch the shot you have to judge where the crosshair is you know it's going to come around to the middle of the kill zone and bang let it go right. so very and uh, I've I've seen improvement in my standing position, but then it, it, like this year's been funny. I started off every year. We start off. I hold a forty shot standing match, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this year I cleaned it. Like my hold, oh, was, <laughs> my hold was like dead steady. And then for the start of the year it was great. And then I had a bump there just before the worlds. It was you know I just couldn't get it together. Mm -hmm. So and then it's back again, right? So it's. It's uh, comparable to, I guess, sitting and kneeling, but it's just a little harder. So some some days you just feel like it's just natural, 
you're steady. Yeah. And then other days, for whatever reason, you're just not quite the same, right? Yeah. And I've, I've read uh, interviews with 10 meter shooters that have mm-hmm. the same thing. That's all they do is stand and shoot. And some days they pick the gun up and they can't miss. Some days they pick the gun up and it's wobble, wobble, wobble. Right. So, right. And that's, you know, if if it was perfect, Philip, it wouldn't, you know, who would do it? You right. do it for a couple of weeks and then go golfing. Right. <laughs> you know? So how often do you practice standing? Uh, I practice a lot. I practice, I shoot probably about 14,000 pellets a year. Mm. So... Uh, and I don't count them. I have a, have a device on my rifle that I train with, the Mantis X. Oh, okay, yeah, mm-hmm. right. that counts them for me. So, but I would probably shoot five to six days a week. Okay. So my typical training re- regime would be twenty five to thirty shots standing, mm-hmm. the same s- sitting, and then the same kneeling. So about ninety shots. So you you. You practice uh, just about as much standing, kneeling, and 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 sitting, so it's about equal. It's about equal, and if I'm, like I said, if I'm run, running into some issues like with the standing, then I will do just a complete mm-hmm. session in standing, like an hour, maybe a hundred shots standing. But you're but doing what, you're doing a lot of shots. That's that's yeah, yeah. But then again, I want that quality shot. Yeah, you know that's that's something I had to tell myself again. Don't care about the score, just. Get that quality shot, even if it, you have to put the gun down six times. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know, I know. Different shooters, different body types, they have different styles of doing the offhand uh, shooting. Uh, what kind of position are your feet? What, um, what else? Uh, what, what does your stance look like? Um, what, what does, what does your wobble look like? Um, and and whenever you're trying to get in the middle of the kill zone, do you try to do a figure eight? Do you try to come down on it? Do you try to go up on it? What, what take? And I know it's different for everybody, but what, yeah. what what do you do whenever you're shooting offhand? Well, I'm, it's kind of a modified ten meter stance. Mm-hmm. You know, your feet are kind of sh- shoulder width, not mm-hmm. too bad. Yeah, you know, field target again, it's different than most sports because sometimes the terrain you're shooting on isn't level, right. so that will that will mess you up. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, you have to account for that, and that does affect your hold quite a bit if one foot's higher than the other. Mm-hmm. So I, I suggest maybe train on uneven terrain. Mm-hmm. Don't just train on the same spot. Uh, uh, regarding what else did you ask me there? Uh, See, so we talked about your feet a little bit there. Uh, what is um, you're trying? To, of course, you're trying to put your elbow on your hip. I imagine. Yeah. I mean, I, I sent you a photograph. I don't know if you of me in a standing position. Right. You know, I've looked at photographs from about twenty years ago, and I mm-hmm. st- I'm still standing kind of very same the same way. Yeah. Right. Elbow on the hip. Right. You know. And, and so, whenever you're you're you see your movement through the reticle, um, are you, so I've talked to some shooters, and they try to do a figure eight. Yeah. Across the kill zone, and then I talked to other shooters where they kind of start at the top and they work down. Where they start at the bottom and work up. What what technique do you do? I've seen to come to coming down on the target mm-hmm. and then coming up. Mm-hmm. I bypass the target and then I come up. And I don't really concentrate on what figure. I have no idea what figure I'm doing. I just concentrate on being the the center of the kill zone. Right. So you're starting at the top. You come on the kill zone. You might go below it and then back up on it. Back up. That seems to be what I I do most of the time. Okay. I don't seem to. I, I did try for a while to come down like the ten meter guys do. Mm-hmm. They come down right at twelve o'clock, and mm-hmm. I, I I found I could. It was natural for me. I right. pass the target and come back up. Okay. Yeah. And what what about your breathing? What are you breathing uh, until you pull the shot, or are you holding your breath as? What is your breathing like? Uh, I, I take a couple of shallow breaths before I start bringing the rifle down. Uh-huh. And to be honest with you, I, I don't know after that. Don't it doesn't hear? seem to be I, – I don't run out. I guess I'm still breathing because I don't run out of air. Right. So it, <laughs> I guess it's, it's shallow. So shallow. Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. As shallow as possible. Yeah. Okay. Now, and uh, whenever you're looking at the target and you're getting ready to pull a shot, is your focus on the on the the crosshair, or is it on the target? I don't know if this makes sense. Are you are you looking at the target, or are you looking at the crosshair? I guess it's a 
a bit of both. I, I'm, I'm aware, very aware of the crosshair. Right. And I want that to be in the middle, mm-hmm. as close to the middle as possible. Right. Again, it depends on your, your form that particular day. Right. Sometimes it's a little worse, so you've got to concentrate. And then you've got to punch the shot when you see it. When yeah. you, you kind of feel your body swaying into the middle of the kill zone, then you've got to take the shot because mm-hmm. time and is running. Yeah. <laughs> and you're you're shooting uh, 12 foot pounds or less. So if there's wind, yeah, you're oh, trying yeah. to compensate for that too. Yeah. And also because you're standing, it doesn't take a lot of wind to move you. It'll move the shooter. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 have, I, I do practice a lot in the wind shooting and it's, you know, especially at anything past 40 yards. I mean, it's one thing to hit the target, but you're trying to hold off an inch. To mm-hmm. the left or to the right, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's yeah. there's a lot going on. Well, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm a hunter uh, field target shooter, and I'm shooting 20 foot pounds. And uh, I think there's some people have a misconception that the 20 foot pound guys don't have to worry about wind, but that's not that's not true. No. At all. And uh, no. of course, that's for another maybe another episode. Uh, we'll talk about wind. Uh, but sounds like what you're saying is you started out um, talking about the the, the offhand lane psychologically there's a part that plays in it. You've got to not be afraid of the, of yeah. the offhand lane. And yeah. it sounds like you're doing a whole lot of practice and, um, and that kind of plays in with the psychological part because you're more comfortable because you've put the time in to, to not be afraid of it. And, um, and then you gave some tips there on, on what you're doing as far as, you know, coming down on it and then back up a lot yeah. of pointers there. Yeah. And then the rifle, the setup for the rifle, mm-hmm. because it's the rules of field target, you can't remove or add anything to the rifle during the, when the match starts. Mm-hmm. So it's a bit of a compromise. If you were to set the rifle up solely for standing, I would set it up completely different than mm-hmm. I have now. Right. But because we shoot mostly sitting, sitting is the primarily position, so you set your rifle up for sitting. Right. And then standing is a bit of a compromise and kneeling is a bit of a compromise. You know, right. I move I move the knee rest around in a different position than I do for sitting. Right. right. So I can get that elbow mm-hmm. into my hip. And, and that's about it. And the, my rifle is kind of heavy. It's 18 pounds. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of effort. But it's still, I'd recommend, uh, I for off-hand shooting, a heavier rifle is kind of better because it's, it's harder initially to control. But once it's under control, it has a tendency to stay there longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And especially if it's nose heavy, is a little bit right. the balance is cheating towards the the muzzle. Right, right. I think that's 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 what I do anyway. Yeah, well, this is good stuff. I mean, uh, no matter if you're a, a WFTF shooter or a hunter shooter or a piston or PCP, you know the scope that you're using is is more powerful than the one I'm using. So it might look a little different in the reticle, but um, a lot of the principles that you're talking about is really the same and. Um, so I really appreciate uh, you sharing some of your knowledge. Anything else you want to add before we close this session? No, that's it. Just uh, try. Don't uh, worry about the size of the kill zone or how far away it is. You know, because right. you, you've heard this before. You're walking on the lanes and a guy goes, oh, man, that's a That seems very far. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. Yeah. You know, I just concentrate on what you do right. and then you'll become a better standing shooter. And we all have to shoot that same target. So. We, all, we all have to shoot it. We all have to shoot it. And then, <laughs> that's, there you go. I, I, I heard guys go, oh, man, it's 35 yards away. Right. So, dude, come on. Yeah. It's shootable. It. it can be hit. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. I've missed I've missed in a match like 20-yard full-size tar- kill zones. Uh-huh. Like, it's 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 crazy. Right, you get, you get really nice, and you don't even, you know, it's ridiculous. Right, but that's that's the mental thing. It's the mental thing, and and uh, there's a whole. I think there's a whole episode we can do on the mental part of field target. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. so much of field target is mental. I mean, you you will defeat yourself, you know, in a heartbeat if you don't if yeah. your head is not in the game. So yeah, if, yeah, absolutely. It's 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 probably. Once you get over the technique thing, I would say it's 90% mental, 10% mm-hmm. physical. Yeah. yeah. All right, Paul, I appreciate uh, all this information and thanks for sharing with the 
the field target community and uh, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Anytime.